Chapter 2 Welcome to Beacon Pines. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. The boys had a good thing going, as long as they kept old Jeff happy. They had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rollo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens.
Arnold and Wilder ran the local paper of record. The Beacon Beacon. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain, too absorbed in a book to be distracted. <laughs> oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Bit much, if you ask me.
Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do, so that he could rule out that option. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. 
There was only one way to find out. emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. <sighs> Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. The sound of footsteps grew louder. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit.
As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. under the weight of the bag. <laughs> Rolo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Rolo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass! Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. 
Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. Uh, 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 